So I'm going to talk about distributed algorithms and try to convince you that this area is very much related to fine grain complexity. I will talk about a joint work with my advisor, Karen Senzorilel, and with Yane and Dean. And in this talk, I'm going to focus on one problem, the all pair shortest paths problem, or in short, APSP. We have a graph, we have weights on the edges, and our goal is to compute the distances between all pairs of vertices. And we want to do it in a distributed way. So in this talk, I'm going to focus on the congested click model. In this model, we have a communication network of n vertices that communicate with each other by sending theta log n bit messages in synchronous rounds. So in each round, each vertex can send a theta log n bit message to uh, each, other vertice, each other vertex. The communication network is a click. This means that everybody can talk with ev everybody. But the input is not necessarily a click. It's just uh, some, uh, some subgraph. And the input and output are local. This means that at the beginning of the computation, each vertex only sees a, a local part of the input. At the beginning, if we talk about APSP, each vertex only knows the distances to its neighbors. And at the end of the computation, the output is also local. This means that at the end of the computation, each vertex needs to know the distances to all other vertices. Okay, so this is the model. And first, one observation here is that in this model, we can actually solve any natural graph problem in just linear number of rounds, at least if the inputs are not too large. So for example, if we look at APSP, we usually assume that the weights are polynomial, so we can represent them in log n bits. So why we can solve anything in a linear number of rounds? So at the beginning, each vertex knows the distances to its neighbors. It has at most linear number of neighbors. So if it has n rounds, it can send this information to all other vertices. And all other vertices can do this as well. As well. So in linear number of rounds, basically, all vertices can learn the complete graph, and then they can solve everything. OK, so they can solve APSP. OK, so it's not very interesting to say that we can solve something in polynomial number of rounds, because anything can be solved in linear number of rounds. So in this sense, everything in this model is fine-grained. We always try to figure out what is the complexity to solve some problem. And specifically, if we look at APSP, so our goal is to try to understand, can we do something better for APSP? OK. Uh, so how can we solve APSP? So one very uh, natural way to solve APSP is to use matrix multiplication. So I think this is very well known that matrix multiplication gives APSP. So let's just talk about it briefly. So here A is a weighted adjacency matrix of the graph. And we multiply matrices in the mean plus semi ring, which is also sometimes called distance product. Uh, so if we multiply matrices in this mean plus semi ring, then A square of U and V basically gives us the minimum weight path between U and V that uses at most two edges. And similarly, A to the I of U V gives the minimum weight path between U and V that uses at most I edges. So if we want to solve APSP, our goal is to compute A to the N. Okay, for each pair of vertices, we want to know the shortest path between them that can, that can use at most uh, N edges. Okay. So if we want to solve APSP, we want to compute A to the N. And this requires only log N matrix multiplications. Why? Because we can start with the matrix A, square it, then square the result, and so on. And after log N iterations of this iterative, iterative, iterative squaring, we get to A to the N. Okay, so if you have an algorithm for matrix multiplication, we can apply it log n times and solve APSP. So now the question is just how fast can we multiply matrices in this model? So there are several works about matrix multiplication in this model. The exact complexity depends on the exact, the exact variant we try to solve if we are in a ring, a semi-ring, rectangular, and so on. And these algorithms basically give give the best complexity for APSP. So if, we are, for example, we are interested in the most general setting, that is APSP in weighted directed graphs, we can use matrix multiplication in a semi ring to get a complexity of about n to the third. For other variants, there are a better complexity. So for example, if we are in unweighted, undirected graphs, we can get a faster algorithm using matrix multiplication in a ring. 
and so on. So you can see that the exact complexity depends maybe in the exact variant we try to solve, but all the complexities here are polynomial. And now the reason, now the question is, do we really need polynomial number of rounds to solve APSP in this model? Okay, so maybe this is a difficult task and maybe uh, we really need polynomial number of rounds to solve it. And another thing you can notice here is that all this algorithm either solves the problem exactly or give a very good approximation. So what happens if we only want an approximation? Okay. Okay, so if we talk about approximation, so one observation that is taken from uh, the sequential setting says that if we can get a better than two approximation for APSP, this actually already solves matrix multiplication. This means that we cannot hope to get a better than two approximation uh, for APSP uh, very fast unless we have a very fast algorithm for matrix multiplication. So we cannot get a sub-polynomial uh, complexity uh, to this problem unless we have a sub-polynomial algorithm for matrix multiplication, which looks like a difficult task in this model. Okay, so what about a uh, worse approximation? What happens if we just want a two approximation or some constant approximation? Can we get something that is sub-polynomial? So what we recently showed that this is actually possible. So if we are okay with a two plus epsilon approximation, this can actually uh, be achieved much, much faster in just polylog number of rounds. So we show that we can get two plus epsilon approximation for APSP in unweighted undirected graphs in just polylog number of rounds. Uh, for weighted graphs, we get a three plus epsilon approximation. And as I said, these are the first polylog constant factor approximation to this problem. So even if we allow to get some constant factor approximation, all the previous results required at least polynomial uh, number of rounds. And as I said, these two that we get is essentially the best we can hope for unless we can get a very fast algorithms for matrix multiplication in this model. Okay, and now I want to say just a few words on, about our techniques just to give uh, some general intuition. So the starting point of our work is a new algorithm uh, for sparse matrix multiplication, a, a work of Karen, Dean, and Elia, that shows that we can multiply matrices in a complexity that depends on their sparsity. So what do I mean by sparsity? So here we talk about um, distance product, so a matrix represents a graph. So the density rho s of a matrix s would be the average degree of a graph. So if we have a graph, for example, with n square root n edges, the average degree is square root n, this is the density of the matrix. Okay, so they show that an algorithm that depends on the density of matrices, and for example, this, uh, if you plug in the parameters, if we take two graphs with n to the one and a half edges, we can multiply them in just order of one round. Okay, so we said that matrix multiplication in general takes polynomial number of rounds, but if we multiply sparse matrices, we can do it actually very fast using this algorithm. Uh, so this looks very promising. Okay, there is some new algorithm for matrix multiplication, and we said that matrix multiplication is very much related to APSP, so let's try to use it and get uh, faster algorithms. The problem is that at first glance, it's not really clear why an algorithm that works fast for sparse matrices actually helps us. So one problem is that we said that we want to take the matrix A and then start to square it iteratively. But even if the matrix A is sparse, the matrix A square can be very dense. Think about a star graph. So a star graph is very uh, sparse, but A square is a complete graph. Okay, so it's not clear uh, how an algorithm that is only fast for sparse matrices helps us. Another issue is that our goal is to compute distances in general graphs, not only on sparse graphs. So why an algorithm that works better on sparse graphs helps us? And I think the key observation here is that many building blocks for distance computation are actually based on computations in sparse graphs. So, what do I mean by building blocks? So I'll just illustrate this in two examples. So one example is a k-nearest problem. In this problem, each vertex wants to compute the distances only to the k closest vertices. Okay, so instead of computing distances to the whole graph, it comp computes distances only to the k closest vertices. 
think about k as a small polynomial, maybe k is square root 10 or something like this. Okay, so in this problem, there is some degree of sparsity because we, ju we just want to compute distances to square root 10 vertices, not to all vertices, and matrix multiplication is actually quite useful to solve in this task. Another problem is a source detection problem. Here we have a, sa a set S of sources, and our goal is to compute distances only from these sources. So again, think about the set of sources as a set of square root n size. So again, we have some sparsity in this problem because we don't want to compute distances from the whole graph, just from some uh, smaller set. So matrix multiplication is also useful for solving this task. Here actually, to solve this task faster, we also need some additional tool called hop sets, but I think this gives uh, the general fl flavor of the results. Okay, so we have an algorithm that works fast for sparse matrices, we have all kinds of building blocks that uh, uh, really has some sparsity, and these building blocks are actually very, very useful for approximation. So the intuition is that if we wa you want to approximate APSP, in some sense it's enough to compute distances only from a small set of vertices to get a constant approximation to all distances. Okay, so based on this intuition, we showed that having a a fast algorithm for sparse matrix multiplication, we can get uh, polylog algorithms for APSP in this model. Okay? So I'll just summarize a, f a few of the things we saw. So at the beginning, we said that if we have matrix multiplication, this gives uh, an algorithm for exact APSP. And we also said that if we can get a better than two approximation for APSP, this already gives an algorithm for matrix multiplication. But these two problems seem currently a bit difficult in this model and require polynomial number of runs. What we showed that if we have a fast algorithm for sparse matrix multiplication, we can get a very fast algorithm for two plus epsilon approximation for APSP in this model. And I'll conclude with some open questions. So the results I've discussed work for undirected graphs and they give approximations. I think an interesting question is what can we say on directed graphs or if we want uh, to compute distances exactly. Okay, so if we, we want to solve APSP, this looks difficult because it's related to matrix multiplication, but what happens if we only want to solve uh, singles or shortest paths? Or we only want to compute the distances between two, a, pair, a pair of vertices in directed graph or to compute the distance between them exactly? Can we get a sub-polynomial algorithm for this? So currently the best results require polynomial time and are based on matrix multiplication. It's not cl uh, really clear. And I think an another interesting question in this area is to try to show additional conditional lower bounds and connections between problems. Um, I think not uh, that much known. And in this model, in the, conge the congested click model is quite related to circuit complexity. So we cannot really hope for unconditional lower bounds, but I think it would be interesting to show additional conditional lower bounds and connections between problems. So assume that we think that matrix multiplication is difficult or that shortest paths in directed graphs is difficult. What else uh, is difficult? Thank you. <laughs>